in every sector want to have a strong and long-lasting relationship with their consumers. That relationship is built on trust. You know, every business has an incredibly vital issue. You've retained that trust. The Economist years ago came out, came out with an infamous statement that said basically all brand values are built on trust. That's why every business has an intense reason to basically retain it. You know, we can see today you know, in the middle of 2019, how important really is trust for brands and corporates? Well, let's talk about Huawei and Google. Let's talk about Boeing. You know, let's talk about Facebook. You know, this issue of brand trust and what it means for brands in a multitude of sectors couldn't be more important. And I think what we're seeing now is it's having completely clear and, and a direct impact on the bottom line. I think this issue about consumer behaviour and consumer action is a really, really valid one because one of the bizarre issues we've seen is the lack of impact that the issues around data breaches have had on, for instance, Facebook. So, from a consumer perspective. So we can say, why is that? Why is it that in virtually any other sector, when a brand is found to be in a real breach of trust position, then consumers move. Why do they move? Because it's an issue obviously of choice and what you don't have in the context of Facebook is choice. So naturally only yesterday you know we saw the issue of Instagram, a Facebook owned entity uh, with, with their latest epic data breach, 49 million people. I think this issue of Facebook owning so much of the real estate around it has done two things that are really, really important. One, it's killed innovation. And second, it's absolutely destroyed the issue of trust that you'd have in, sorry, issue of choice that you'd have in any other sector. Hence, I think the clarion call that we're now seeing from, for instance, presidential hopefuls in the presidential race. You know, we've seen only last week Elizabeth Warren making a really big statement about this. AOB, sorry, AOC, the, the, the absolute heroine um, of millennials or society generally, if you say, around the planet, has a very, very strong view on this in terms of Facebook should be broken up. So the issue of consumer choice is absolutely vital. And I think so. We're now seeing people really understanding, particularly when it comes to privacy, you know, I think we've, we've really crossed the hurdle of this being a, let's say, a misunderstood, almost niche issue, as it was, quite frankly, until a couple of years ago, from the mainstream point of view, people didn't really make the connection. They started to make the connection clearly last year with the Cambridge Analytica scandal, when they saw, that, for instance, a result of hyper-targeting, of democracy happening in darkness, or people being played around with from the point of view of distortion and distraction and disinformation had, in many people's eyes, gone a long way to helping us get Donald Trump. So I think, again, only today, as we speak, European elections are going on. I think the issue of data privacy is now centre stage. So this issue of how and when and why will people understand the implications of their own data, which is as much of theirs as their clothes or their car or their home, what will they do when they realise that it is theirs and what will it take to actually wake them up? Is this idea of monetized privacy? So startups now coming to market from the point of view of saying your data has monetary value, that monetary value has forever existed with someone else you know, effectively Mr. Zuckerberg, etc. Now we're seeing startups coming to market saying, here's the deal, we'll take your data, pay you for it, and then with your permission, we'll then effectively rent it out to companies and then give it back to you after an agreed time. Once people hear that great idea of your data has a monetary value, then they go, you got me there. Forget the details, give me the cash. And so that issue of monetized privacy is, I think, over the next couple of years going to explode as an issue. I think the key issue about what happens next is a real coalescing, coalescing, should we say, of issues. So the trust thing 
is really, really building, couldn't be more centre stage. The privacy thing is really building and couldn't be more centre stage. The empathy thing and the ethics thing are coming together. And if you wrap those around things like transparency, then from my point of view, we find ourselves in a situation that's all about what I've termed in the book, reputation capital. So people looking from both an internal and external point of view, so this is either employees um, or customers on a B2B market or consumers on a B2C market, looking at brands and corporations and organisations and public services from the point of view of are they trustworthy, are they reliable and are they competent. And if you judge brands or organisations by that, then you can see why, back to today, why it is that brands, let's say, like VW or Huawei or Boeing have such a problem. No one could deny that they've got two of those things completely correct. They are obviously eminently competent and what they make is, in many cases, very reliable. Boeing, one could argue a strong case, have tripped over big time on the reliability issue, to put it mildly. And in terms of being trustworthy, that's a mountain to climb for someone like Boeing. You know, if, you're, if you have a choice of airliners, which one are you going to be going with? You know, quite frankly, it's a real dot, dot, dot thing, isn't it? So again, that issue of, say, big brands and organisations and public services, governments, all being viewed through that prism of, are they trustworthy, reliable and competent, is huge. It's the same thing, say, if you're going for a job. Again, if choice is available, and we all know that the difference between most companies and most brands in most sectors is minute. So, it doesn't matter if you're a, and someone new to market, Generation Z, or a millennial, or an Xer, or a boomer, increasingly we're hearing, for instance, from HR teams. People are saying, quite frankly, how good are you? Prove it. Because in terms of credibility, you prove your credibility by your actions. You might tell me you're a nice guy. Prove it. You might tell me that your corporation is a good corporation. Prove it. And that goes, say, from HR to advertising. We have endless brands talking about brand purpose, talking about CSR, talking about all the wonderful things they do, and they may do the occasional thing. The question is, how consistent is that?